pleasant day it's alicia and i'm here for another bible study today we'll be studying john chapter 15 let's pray before we begin most righteous and eternal father we come to you in the mighty name of jesus unto the authority of the holy spirit father we love you we are so grateful to you for your saving grace for your tender mercies, for your continued guidance and protection. Father, we are grateful to you for your almighty goodness towards us. Father, we are grateful to you for your splendor, your awesome beauty. Wherever we look, we see expressions of you. Wherever we turn our eyes or our ears, all our senses that you have given us, whenever we use them up, we have a reason to praise you. Even our mouth while we're eating our favorite meals praise you. We're grateful. Because, Father, you have provided. Because, Father, you have given us everything we desire and even that which we did not know we ought to desire because father you have done it every time every time you keep doing it over and over and over because father you do not need to compete with anybody for your role you are god and god alone father you are the one that purposed to create us. It is so amazing. It is so wonderful that you, you are the one who purposed to save us. We are grateful. Your love for us, we could never think to imagine the depth and the height and the breadth of it. We could not think to imagine how much you love us. It's impossible for us to, to figure it out. But you know what? We don't need to. Because you tell us every day. You tell us every day when you display your love to us in every way we can look to see it, we can hear, we can read your word to know, and we can also speak to you to experience. Father, the most important evidence of your love is your indwelling presence within us. We are grateful. We are grateful. Father, there's nowhere we can go to escape it. You're always with us. David said, even if we make our bed in hell, you're going to be there. Everything is yours. Even hell was created by you. What can we do? What can we ever say? We are so great to create. Father, teach us to accept you and Jesus. You see, because accepting Jesus is so important, teach us to accept Jesus. Help us to accept Jesus. Help us to understand him too. See, our Savior, our King, my King, my King, I love you so much. Jesus, you're amazing. You are awesome. You are wonderful. You are altogether lovely. Savior, King, we love you. We adore you. Father, we glorify you in the name of Jesus. We send up your praise to you continuously, continually. We are grateful. We even give you our thanks in the name of Jesus. We are grateful. Father, we are in awe. We are in awe. So today, 
as we come before your presence, because we know of ourselves we are nothing, we surrender to you, Jesus. We're grateful. And we repent of our sins. We confess them and give them up. Jesus, we don't want nothing to do with these sins. These sins are filthy sins. They are no use to us except to cause a mischief for us. Except to cause us to be coming out of the path of righteousness. Except to cause us to stumble. These sins have no good purpose for us. So Father, teach us to hate sin and to love righteousness. Father, teach us how to hate evil and to love good. Praise be to God. Father, teach us how to be fruitful so we can bear fruits for the kingdom. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we ask that you pour into us your righteousness, your goodness, your grace, your mercy, your kindness, your peace, your forgiveness. We're grateful. Father, we ask that you fill us up with the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Praise be to God. Father, we ask that you will keep our mind steadfast on you. Father, we request that you grant us the knowledge about you through your words. Help us to understand them. Father, we ask that you grant us wisdom and understanding so that we'll be able to discern. Praise God. We're grateful. We're grateful. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, because you love us, let us experience your goodness always. Teach us. It's not about us. It's all about our Jesus. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. Father, comfort our souls through the Holy Spirit to know we can be confident in you. In this world, we may not be loved. We may be hated, but we are loved by you. Praise be to God. Father, also help us to keep the commandments that Jesus has given. Help us to love you with all our heart, all our soul, all our mind, all our strength. Father, help us to keep the commandments Jesus has given to love our neighbors as ourselves. Father, help us to love each other. There are so many things and in so many ways that we could come and complain about why we cannot love a person, but teach us how to love each other. If the only thing we have to love about each other is the fact that we are we are all created by you. We need to love each other. Hallelujah. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, plant the words in our heart, in our soul, in our mind, in our spirit, so that we will live the words and be the words. Father. Plant them on good ground so they yield fruits in abundance for the kingdom. Father, reach the hearts of those that are unbelievers. And let them be saved in the name of Jesus. Father, reach the heart of believers so that they can be saved. Father, we are grateful. We are grateful. Father, we know that you have given us the strength we need. We also know you have given us the power we need. We also know we have the authority that you have given. We also know we need to just believe. Father, fill us up with faith. Increase our faith 
significantly and continuously. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. Father, we put our families before you. We put our friends too. We put everybody that we associate with and we put our enemies before you. You see them. You know them. You know all their individual needs and you will supply accordingly. Father, for the ones that are not yet saved, Father, give them opportunities to be saved. Father, for the ones who are saved, give them strength to continue on. Teach them to persevere. Thank you, Jesus. Father, bless the work of our hands. Father, bless our minds so that we will think your thoughts. Bless our soul so that we will rejoice in you. Bless our spirit so that we will continue to seek your face. Bless our mind so that our thoughts will be centered on you always. Father, in the name of Jesus, bless our heart, that our heart will be always be set on you. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. Father, what do we have that we could ever offer to say we deserve you? We accept your free gift of salvation. We are grateful. We are grateful. Thank you, Jesus. We are grateful. And so, Father, today, as you have given it to us, we give it back to you. Praise God. Help us to surrender to you today, Father. Teach us to be obedient to your will. Teach us to choose you, no matter how busy the day gets. Teach us to choose you, to do everything that we do to give you honor and glory. Praise God. Father, teach us to guard our heart and be careful what comes out of our mouths. Let us speak life. Praise God. And let us live to declare the glory of you, O oh, Almighty God. Father, embolden us so we will not cower, but we will persevere. Praise God. Father, today as we go out and come in, be with us always. Father, permit our dwelling. Father, hide us in your secret place. But the physical dwelling, Father, put an encampment around it. No evil can come near. Praise God. Praise God. Holy Spirit, you will restrain and bind and cast out. Praise, praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Holy Spirit, speak to our heart today. Speak to our mind. Teach us of the ways of our Father, so that we could go before him with thanksgiving and praise. Praise be to God. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come against the enemy. We know we don't need to worry about the enemy. We know that you will take care of the enemy. So we leave the enemy in your care. We come against every single agent that he has. And so we come against every single wiles of the enemy. And so we come against every single agenda. We cancel them in the name of Jesus. So we rip up any contract we have ever, ever, ever gotten into with the enemy. Whether knowingly or unknowingly. In the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus, you block them out. All the ordinances. Jesus, you already sever. Every single link. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Father, we pray that you will help bring healing to the ones who are still bound up. Although they have come into the family, they are still bound up. Set them free. Praise God. Set them free. Set them free in the name of Jesus. Set them free. Teach them. Faith is essential. Don't just stay at the same level you are. Teach us how to grow in faith, Father. Praise God, praise God, praise God. 
Teach us in the time of tribulation and trials to come to you, seek your face, cry at your name. Praise God. Hallelujah. Father, teach us how to be obedient little children unto you. Praise God. Praise God. And Father, whatever I did not say, whatever I needed to have said, whatever I desired to say, but somehow it escapes me, and also in agreement with what I said, let it so be done according to your good pleasure. Praise God, praise God. Praise God, praise God. Hallelujah. And so, Father, as we go forth triumphantly, mightily, cheerfully, because our King has overcome, we wrap our prayers in the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, our King. We anoint our prayers with the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit, our Comforter. And we send them up for you, Father. Sweet Savior, may they be. May they be acceptable in your sight. O oh, our God, our King, we love and adore you. We celebrate you. We give you glory, honor, dominion, and power. You are holy, holy, holy. We worship you. We give you every honor and praise. Thank you, Father. Glory be to your name. We are grateful. We are grateful. In Jesus' name we pray. Always believing, knowing, receiving, thanking you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's begin. Verse 1. I am the true vine and my father is the husbandman. Praise God. So, continuing with our Savior. As he's walking across to go to the garden, he begins to tell them more, more intimate details about our relationship with the Father, right? So he's explaining that he is the true vine. True means genuine. True means the right one. True means the correct one, right? If there's a true vine, that means there's a false vine. Take note of that, right? So he is telling us he is the true vine, right? Praise God. And he's explained to us that the father is the husband man. That means the father is the vine dresser. Now, the vines, it's important that the vines are tended to meticulously right because if they're not attended to meticulously the produce will not be of top quality and the yield would not be as good as we want it to be now Jesus is explaining here the father is who tends to the vineyard Therefore, if the father is tending to the vineyard, there's no way anything corrupt can come from the vineyard. Because what do we know of the father? The father is holy. Jesus himself is holy. Therefore, everything concerning the vineyard is established in holiness. Praise be to God. So we are clear that to be in Christ, we are then tasked with the duty, the requirement, the request to be holy. We have to be holy. You cannot abide in Christ and be unholy. It, it just does not work. Right? Because the Father cannot work with unholiness. Not with all the Father is holy. He cannot work with unholiness. So, right there and then, we have bashed the concept of people coming in Christ and remaining with their sinful behavior. It doesn't work that way. On this walk to Gethsemane, Jesus is basically saying to the disciples, continue to be holy. Continue to hold fast to holiness. He is basically pointing out 
it is essential that the church is holy to abide in me you have to be holy now is jesus telling us to be holy all by ourselves? no remember he already said we should ask for the comforter because he will pray to the father to send us the comforter he will pray to the father to send us the comforter and we should ask for the comforter as well therefore we have god within us and if we have god within us god is holy we are therefore to continue to be holy right because if we're not holy the holy spirit cannot dwell within us so it is essential that we yield to the holy spirit and then the holiness will become possible praise god take note of that fact it is essential right so jesus is using the analogy of a vineyard right so let's continue verse 2 every branch in me that bear it not fruit he take it away and every branch that bear it fruit he purged it that it may bring forth more fruit praise be to god so what do we hear every branch in jesus that does not bear fruit the father take it away what does this mean you see a lot of persons they're confused about what is required of them to continue in christ submission submission is required you have to submit to the holy spirit's leading because if you do not bear fruit you will be taken away by the father why because the father will cast out the unclean and unholy thing if you come to Jesus, you say you believe in Jesus, as a lot of people do. A lot of people do, you know. They say they believe in Jesus. They say, yes, they're for Jesus, but they're unclean. But they're continuing in their sin. But they are not willing to put away from them the sin. What is Jesus telling us? The Father will take it away. If you're a branch and you do not bear fruit, the father will take it away because you are misrepresenting the body of Christ because Jesus doesn't stand for sin he dies for it he does not indulge in sin he never sinned how then did we ever come to a conclusion that Jesus would ever accept sin do not be fooled sins not accepted not not ever it never was and it never will be praise god if we bear fruit doesn't mean that we are left to just bear fruit and flourish no we are attended to if we bear fruit praise god the father is meticulously attending to the vineyard therefore if we bear fruit we will be pruned what does this mean because we are bearing fruit we have to be pruned we have to be attended to we have to be cared for so things that we have within us that are not in alignment has to be taken out and cast away we are bearing fruit for us to get to bear more fruit we will have to face the blade of the pruning knife what does this mean we will be tested we will be tried we will go through the trials of our faith imagine if you only stayed with the same level of faith that you came with you would wither and die much the same way like a vineyard if the vineyard was not pruned more fruit will not come with each cut of that pruning knife newness come about the old is chipped away and newness come about newness springs forth if we have too many dead leaves and dead branches and dead things the vineyard would not yield enough it would not yield as much as it could 
So the Father has to cut away the dead things. Right? So while we're in Christ, we will be going through the pruning process continuously. What is essential? You ought not to run away from nor fear pruning. So the Holy Spirit will correct us. The Holy Spirit will lead us. The Holy Spirit will guide us in the way we ought to go. You cannot be afraid to experience and encounter hardships. You cannot be afraid nor dreading trials. If you go through something difficult, what do you do? Trust in God. If you face something very hard, testing of your faith, what do you do? Trust God. In everything, with everything, concerning everything, trust in God. The Father is actively pruning away. Now, will some of the pruning hurt? Of course it will. It will. But the fact is, more fruits will be yielded from it. You go through the period of rough and tough. You go through the period of pain and trials. And what, what will come? More fruit. More fruit. And more and more fruit. Praise be to God. So let us not be afraid to be pruned and purged by the Father. The more we are pruned and purged, the more fruit will, will bring forth. Praise God. Take note, Jesus is not saying you will lose your salvation. That's not what he's saying. You believe in Jesus, you're saved. But if you believe in Jesus and you claim you're sinning, you have not truly believed. Those were not even grafted in the first place. But if you believe in Jesus and you're not yielding fruit, Fruits are what? The fruits of the Spirit. So you're not exercising love. You're not exercising peace. You're not exercising joy. You're not exercising long suffering. You're not exercising goodness. You're not exercising meekness. You're not exercising gentleness. You're not exercising faith. You're not exercising self control. What will result? The Father will take you away. Right? The Father will take you away because you're not bearing fruits. Therefore, you cannot be in the vine. You will not be close to Christ. You will not be close to Christ at all. You will be there, but you'll be, you'll not be close to Him. Because everybody that is in Christ should be bearing fruits. It's not that you're gonna be in. The process of yielding when you're not yielding. If you're not yielding, you're not yielding. You cannot be a part of the active vine. It is just not possible. If you came to Christ because you want to be saved from hellfire, no problem. You don't want to bear fruit. You're not going to be chosen and desired by the father to come close to him you're gonna stay right where you are the father will not be pleasing you neither understand that one this is why it is essential for us to bear fruits because it's not a if we should bear fruits it's we all should bear fruits if you understand what i'm saying we all should bear the fruits to show that we are of the Father. So, if you call yourself a child of God, but you're not faithful to God, but you're not trusting God, but when the trials of the world and the cares of the world come, you fall down fall into temptation you are dead and if you're dead you cannot be alive in christ if you understand what i'm saying 
if you're dead how then can you be fruitful if you're dead how then can you be considered to be a part of you will be on the bottom you cannot bear fruit you cannot come up to the top you cannot flourish to be a part of the branches that bear understand this these are the people they would want to be given positions of leadership but they're not bearing fruits they will hate the ones that are bearing fruits but they themselves have they themselves are unfruitful and they will want to make confusion for the ones who do but bear in mind this one thing who is pruning who is dressing the vine the father if he cut us off it's because we don't fit take note those who are cut off basically the word is gone now while you may not face the fire of hell you're in danger of hellfire because what do we know about the people who don't stay connected to the vine they will lose the sustenance that comes in the vine and what do we know they may turn away the people who are cut off are at a greater risk of being apostate than the people who are grafted in and stay in so the ones that are cut out of the vine they'll be replaced because what where do we know our god is not about to lose the yield because some branches fall off he's gonna graft in new vines and what are these new vines the original vines the children of israel who who will then believe they'll be grafted in praise god let it be made clear here the father is not the one who is going to cause apostasy because he cut out the branch let it be made clear coming to christ is a personal thing if you come to christ and you're holding on to your sin and you don't want to remove your sin from your life you're choosing to stay in your old life and you're choosing to love your old things and you're choosing to be into that you have already started letting go of christ you have already started saying what i initially believed i no longer believe you understand so it's not so much christ that let you go it's you that have let go of christ it's you that never grab all of him in the first place take note of that if i say i believe in you but I do not support what you do. I do not even endorse it. Even in the smallest way. I do not cheer you on. I am not a part of your problem and your pain. I am not there when you need me the most. I am not a part of building you up in the process. How then can I say I believe in you? When you have reached the place of getting reward now. I want to show up and say I have always believed in you the truth of the matter is I have done nothing to show that I've believed in you what would you then do you would think that I'm lying you would think that I just want to reap your rewards and not do the work it's the same thing people who call themselves believers because they just want to reap the benefits and they don't want to labor in the harvest will not reap rewards from the harvest take note of that fact they are more likely to turn away from the faith if you are for Christ be for Christ the father knows your heart so the father knows if you are for Christ and the father knows if you're not for Christ if you're not for Christ the father is not gonna make no bones about it you're gonna be cut out of the branch to be cut out mean you are grafted in why were you grafted in? Because you initially confess your belief in him. 
your heart initially believed. You just believe and that's it. You don't do anything to bear the fruit of your belief. You don't repent of your sins and stay out of it. You repent of your sins and you go back into it. You repent of your sins and then you're gone back to the vomit. Everybody around you cannot see the change in you because you're still living the same old way. You're not bringing souls to Christ. You're not ministering about Christ. You're just in the same rut. You're not seeking after the ways of Christ. Nobody can look at your life and say, there is a believer of Christ. It is just not evident. The Holy Spirit's anointing is not evident in your life. That's a problem. Because if you don't have the Holy Spirit, how are you going to be connected to the vine? Let's consider carefully. If we have the Holy Spirit, we're connected to the vine, we're going to go through hardship, you know. Serious hardship. The trials of life, the cares of this world will really test us. But you know what? We will stand up under the pressure, you know what? Because our strength comes from the Father. We are in the vine. Therefore, the sustenance, the nourishments are going to reach us. And we're going to bear fruits. Despite the hardship, we're going to bear fruits. In fact, the more the hardships, the more fruits we bear. Praise God. So let's continue verse 3. Now he are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Praise God. Being clean is important. Because what do we know about our Father? He is holy. He loves purity he loves cleanliness right how are we made clean we are made clean by the blood of jesus and the words of jesus praise god it's a combined effect the blood of jesus we know about the blood of jesus through what his gospel his words praise god so Jesus is there telling the disciples they are clean. Remember, he washed their feet. But it's not the water that he used to wash their feet that made them clean. It's the word. How do we know this? He even washed Judah's feet. He even washed his feet. It, it, it's not as though washing a feet is what make you clean. It's the word of God. Is the word of God washing your heart? Washing your soul, washing your mind, washing your spirit. Are you being washed by the word of God? You see, this is how a lot of people remain where they came in. Because after initially seeking after God and finding him, they do nothing about the knowledge of discovering him. They do nothing about the relationship. They just find him and that's it. In any relationship you have with anyone, if you do not show interest, if you do not spend time investing in your relationship, if you do not give it your all and really focus on growing in your relationship, seeking after the best interests of your partner and all that kind of thing, how then can you say you have a relationship with someone? If all you do is take from the person yet you never share with them yet you never give what is that it's a one-sided parasitic affair no parasites in christ you have to labor right we're not working for our salvation we're saved already but we have to continue the work of christ because christ is still working he is still mediating he is still interceding he is still laboring on our behalf. Therefore, no child of God should be sitting around, lazing around, cocking up foot and saying, they have arrived. You have not arrived. Work is still yet to be done because what, what do we know? There are souls still to be saved. Praise God. So, but we are cleaned through the word. Why? Because the word will give us the sustenance. The word will help us to stay focused. The word will help us to be encouraged. The word will bring us closer to Christ. We want to continue in him, you know. Yeah? It's his word. 
So we continue in his word. We continue in him. Praise God. So that's what makes us clean. His word. Spoken over us. Spoken for us. Given for nourishment concerning us. So let's continue. Verse 4. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself. Except it abide in the vine. No more can he except he abide in me. Praise God. There is no bearing fruit without Christ. We have to abide in him. You see, Jesus is expounding on what salvation is here. See, a lot of people think, okay, to, to experience salvation, to be saved, is just to believe in Christ. You believe in Christ, you are spared from Elphiah. Praise God. But do you truly believe though? Because if you truly believe the gospel of Jesus Christ, you will abide in him. Because what do you know about Jesus? He is the way, the truth, and the life. If you believe that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, you will not leave him to go do anything. After saying you believe in him and you're grafted in, you will not leave him out of your life you will live your life in obedience to him all the time because you understand he is the way the truth the life understand if you say you confess christ but you choose another leader but you choose to follow after another person but you choose to gravitate towards another direction but you choose to follow another philosophy but you choose to fall prey to another gospel but you're yielding to another gospel that means you don't really truly believe in Christ understand that to be a fact if you believe in Christ you will continue in his word doing his thing abiding in him for his purpose to be done in your life because the only way you can bear fruits for Christ is if you continue in Christ. Can't say you're for Christ. Yet you're not continuing in him. It's folly. You're a counterfeit. Because what do we know about abiding in Christ? The Holy Spirit abides within us. If the Holy Spirit is not within you. How then can you say you are of Christ? The proof of your birthright is missing. It should not be missing. Not if you're truly converted, it would not be missing. Take note of the fact. A lot of persons, they have gotten to a place. They believe. But they don't accept. You have to believe Christ and accept him too. To be able to continue abiding in him too. If you only believe in Christ, you are no better than demons. They, they believe in Christ. They know he is the son of God. They know he is the savior of the world. They know. They are. They witnessed it. The devil knows it too. How better are you than the devil? That you believe in Christ. Have you accepted Christ though? Accepting Christ means a decision has to be made. To receive him as your personal savior. Personal. Because you're now going to begin a relationship with him. As your savior. If Christ is your savior. You will give up your sins. If Christ is a savior. You will abide in him. If Christ is a savior. You will bear fruits for him. You will live for him. Praise God. If Christ is a savior. It's not difficult. To continue to abide in him. Remember we have the Holy Spirit. We cannot bear fruits without Christ. And say we are of Christ. It doesn't make sense. Praise God. So let's continue verse 5. I am the vine. Ye are the branches. He that abideth in me. And I in him. The same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. Praise God. So what is Christ saying here? He is the vine. And we are the branches. Right? 
is basically saying, if you abide in me and I in you, he's talking about the oneness here. Right? Oneness. If the oneness is in effect, we will bring forth fruits. Because we cannot bring forth fruits without him. We can do nothing without him. Okay? It's the reason why it's important to understand the oneness, you know. We are in Christ. He is in us. He is in the Father. The Father accepts us. That's how it works. That's how it works. There's no getting to the Father without getting in Christ. Take note of the fact. We are in Christ. He is in us. He is in the Father. The Father covers him and us. Take note of the fact. That's how the oneness works. That's how we are called children of God. There is no being a child of God and you have excluded Christ. It cannot work. There is no bearing fruit. Yet you are not bearing fruit through Christ and unto Christ. It cannot work. We cannot do anything without him. Praise God. So let's continue. Verse 6. If a man abideth not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and he is withered. And men gathered them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. Praise God. Now, because believers who don't continue in Christ, and these are believers, you know, they believe at a time for them to for them to have been grafted in they would have believed so take note i'm not talking about unbelievers jesus is not talking about unbelievers here he is talking about believers you had believed in christ you had you had given your life to him you said he was your savior but at the same time you didn't give up your worldly pleasures you didn't yield to him and his leading you may have been rebellious. You may have gone and taken back the old man and continued in his ways. Because what? The true surrender did not reach you. You believe, but the true surrender did not reach you. You did not yield to Christ's will. Yeah? You did not surrender your everything. So you cannot abide in him if you don't fully surrender. He requires everything. You can't have one foot dangling out in the world. And one foot in Christ. It doesn't work that way. The father will spit you out of his mouth. Immediately. You get some warning. You don't listen. You'll be, you, you'll, you'll be spewed out. You cannot continue. You cannot abide. Because what do we know? If you do not abide in Christ. You cannot bear fruit. If you cannot bear fruit. You cannot say you are of Christ. Because he is bearing fruit. And everything that belongs to him bears fruit. Take note of the fact. Because you are cut out. You are taken out by the father. Yeah. If you continue to be that way. After a while what happen? A branch that is taken out will wither. When you wither whatever nutrients you had in you. That was going back into the ground. You become trash. After all that is gone. And what happened? You are gathered. And you cast into fire. And you burn. Because you believe not in Christ. To continue in him. You believe in Christ just to be saved by him. But you did not believe in Christ enough to continue in him. What's the point? Of believing in Christ to be saved by him but yet not continuing in him if you do not continue in him you will go to face the fire anyway what am I trying to say if you are not surrendered to Christ you have not escaped the flames of hell if you are not abiding in Christ you have not escaped the flames of hell. Why is this essential to point out? Because a lot of people believe that once they confess Jesus, that is it. We have to be judged by Christ, you know. We have to be judged by Him. 
And if we did not do good things, bear fruits for him, what will happen? We will be unbelievers. Not because we did not believe. We believe at first, but we did not operate in the belief. We did not operate in the belief. And then because we did not operate in the belief, how then can we get a reward for that? Hmm? It is not the fact that salvation is not come to this person. You know. It's the fact that this person did not continue in salvation that has come. You believe in Christ, salvation is come to you. You continue in him, salvation abides with you. You don't continue in him, it's not that Christ has moved away. It's you. You that have moved away. Because you started believing in another thing. Because you started doing another thing. Because you're so hooked on another thing. So you have moved away from him. And then he will have to judge you because you were one to grafted in him. So the judgment that is that is come to the person who believed but did not abide. Is that you'll be treated just like an unbeliever would never believe. In fact, let me be very clear to point it out here. Because you had once believed, your punishment will be worse than an unbeliever who did not ever believe because they did not ever hear about Jesus. The unbelievers who did not believe but heard about Jesus, they will receive a heavier punishment than the ones who did not believe because they did not hear him. If a person did not believe about it because they did not hear about him, they will be punished, but they will not be punished as severely as the person who did not believe but heard about him. And even more so, the person who believed in him but did not abide in him. They will be punished way more. Because having tasted of him, you rejected him. It's a rejection, isn't it? Take note, it's a rejection. It's not a rejection of unbelief. Because you believe in Christ. But you still reject him anyway. Because you decide you did not want to abide in him. It's much worse. Because if you cannot abide in him, you'll be cast out. You'll be judged and cast out. And you will be cast into the fire. There are some people who are saying, we're not safe. Our salvation is not secure. Your salvation is secure. Your salvation is secure. But... You can't be pretending to be saved. Do you understand what I'm saying? If you're truly saved, you're going to do the will of God. No, sir? Okay, let's put it in terms of things that people could understand then. So we are part of two teams that are playing a game. We are in a competition. We are on two different sides. We have, we have it split down to the middle. Two different sides. Team 1 and Team 2. Team 1 decided that, you know what? How we will be identified is we will wear a certain color. So say Team 1 choose blue. And Team 1 says, everybody's going to wear blue and we're going to be shouting at every time our team is moving in a certain direction. We say yes. If our team is moving to the right, we're going to shout to encourage them they're doing the right thing if they're moving to the left we're going to rebuke them and tell them no go to the right to let them know that they're not doing the right thing we're going to let them know the signal will be a rebuke for the movement to the left a shout of cheer for the move to the right fair enough fine team one knows the rules of team one everybody's in agreement Everybody going to show up in blue. Team 2 is wearing pink. Team 2 have their own rules. Team 2 decides everybody that is moving to the right on their team will be given a stiff reprimand. They'll be rebuked. They'll be chastised. And everybody who is going to the left will be given a hefty cheer because they're doing the right thing. They're going to wear their pink to show solidarity 
that they're on their team. The day of the game, a team one member comes in pink. And when the team is moving to the right, they start to rebuke the team. Everybody else cheering the team, this one person rebuking the team. Rebuking the team loudly too. In fact, when they move into the left, this person sit down and don't say nothing. While everybody else on the team is rebuking, this one sit down and say nothing. But as soon as they start moving to the right, active to rebuke. Everybody in team one would really look at this person and say, well, are you for us or are you against us? You come on our side, yet you come in pink. You're not even doing the thing you say. We, we, we agreed upon you're not doing it you were there at the first meeting you were in the numbers when we decided what we're going to wear and how we're going to cheer but you're not doing it you're cheering for the other team because you're indirectly sending the members in another direction in the direction of the other team when you're supposed to rebuke them you say nothing when you're supposed to cheer them you rebuke them what is it make a choice pick a choice if you're on the team that wears the pink as you're wearing the pink then go on the team where wears the pink the person is adamant that they're on the team one there's nothing to, to indicate that they're on team one anybody looking in team one is going to see a very obvious one that stands out that no this one is the enemy in the camp it's like that it's like that misrepresenting christ not living for Christ, not following his word, doing a different thing, rebelling against him. You cannot receive of his gifts and his rewards if you do not abide in him. And you're not obedient to his will and to his way. Although this person in pink claim they're in team one, they are actually a supporter of team two. And they will be cast out because none of the team one will want them around. It will cast out and if team two don't take them in they'll be cast out you know what i'm saying team two will take them in because well, they already were in the pink anyway you see the behavior will be accepted in team two because even if they don't cheer when the person is going left they keep silent at least they're rebuking when the person is going right so they're already in alignment with team two so team two will take them in gladly you see the person claimed they were in team one, you know. The person attended the first meeting too. And get all the instructions too. But they did not demonstrate. Nor display their support. When the time come. Take note of the fact. Cannot be team one. You don't look like team one. You don't behave like team one. You don't support team one. You're not team one. You're actually team two. Take note of the fact. It's like that. We, Team Christ, never support the Team Devil. Why should we? Why should we give of our substance to the Devil? Why should we abide in sin for the Devil to get rewards? Never. It's important that we understand that. So if you operate like the Team Devil, you're going to get the reward of Team Devil. It's just like that. It's just like that. Christ did not move, but you did. So you get the reward of the devil. So let's continue verse 7. If he abide in me and my words abide in you, he shall ask what he will and it shall be done unto you. Praise God. So there are conditions, there are terms, there are rewards for those who abide in Christ. If we abide in him, his words will abide in us. Why? It is essential. Remember, we are clean by the word. Holiness is important unto our Father. Purity is essential. Right? Being clean is a must. So therefore the words will abide in us. Right? Not only will we have the words abiding in us. We will ask whatever we will. And it shall be done. Unto us. Why? Because we are going to ask for things we're going to make requests concerning the furtherance of the work of Christ. We're going to seek after things 
that will help us to continue to abide in him right therefore he will give it to us the things that we request he will give us graciously readily why because we're asking in his name right this is the same promise he gave in saint john 14 13 and 14 he said and whatever you ask in my name that will i do that the father may be glorified in the son if he asks anything in my name i will do it praise be to god so he's telling us how to ask he's telling us we should not hesitate to ask because he will do it he's up he's assuring us it will be done ask what you will it will be done what do we know about our will when we abide in christ we are in oneness therefore our will will align with his perfectly so we will ask things that are in alignment with the will of god praise god that's how it works let's continue verse 8 herein is my father glorified that he bear much fruit so shall he be my disciples praise god so he's saying my father is glorified when you bear much fruits that way you will be my disciples what are you saying you cannot be his disciple if you don't bear fruit you cannot be his disciple if you don't abide because only how you can bear fruit if you abide hmm? the father could be glorified when you bear fruits praise be to god that is what glorifies the father when he sees that those who are called by the name of his son bear fruit unto his son which is unto the father by extension praise be to god the father will cheer us on and the father will not hesitate to give us anything so here we have the son telling us ask in his name and it will be given to us the father will not hesitate to release the gifts we ask for take note of the fact these things are not just material things a lot of people oh i'm serving jesus that means everything is mine no problem but what do you want these things for is it for the furtherance of the gospel is it to bear more fruits if you focus on asking for things that will further the gospel and bear more fruits you will get them readily because what you are bearing fruits therefore the father will give you that which you ask for readily praise god so take note of that because we're glorifying the father when we bear much fruits the more fruits we bear the more we glorify the father praise god that is something we should endeavor to do he will he will watch us he knew and he will support us praise god so let's continue verse 9 as the father had to love me so have i loved you continue ye in my love praise be to god so jesus is saying as the father have loved me and remember now this is a serious thing here because we know the father loved the son with everything it's not a small love you know it's a all-consuming powerful love the father loves the son with everything there is nothing the father has withheld from his son and jesus is here saying as the father have loved me i have loved you why there's nothing he will withhold from us take note of the fact that's a very serious love that love cannot be touched by anything anyone ever take note of the fact and what is he saying continue in my love abide in my love listen the love of jesus is more powerful than anything we can ever experience you know is more powerful than anything we have ever known hallelujah think about it jesus is loving us just like the father loved him tall order very tall order let me tell you there's no way we could ever love jesus like he loves us ever think about it we could never love jesus the way he loves us praise be to god he's good he's awesome so let's continue verse 10 if he keep my commandments he shall abide in my love even as i have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love praise be to god so jesus is saying 
If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. Just as though I have kept my father's commandment and abided in his love. Why? Because the commandments are given to us. The father gave his commandments through his son. The son keep them. Every bit of them. He did not deviate. Not even once. He abided in the father's love because he was obedient to him. You know why? Because it's true belief. If you say you believe in someone, you're going to abide. You're going to be obedient to the cause. Hmm? Anybody looking on will see who you believe in. Jesus is now saying, if you really love me, you will abide in my commandments. You'll be obedient to do my commandments. Praise be to God. It's important, you know. We have to continue in Jesus word in his commandments so that we could abide in his love what do we know about Jesus commandments the commandments are all about love they're all about love the father's commandments were centered on love too so if you want to do the will of the father you have to be in love if you want to do the will of the son you have to be in love they're in oneness you know that's all there in oneness. In fact, the son fulfilled the father's commandments and his commandments are the summation of the father's commandments. Praise be to God. It is essential to note. Very essential to note. So let's continue. Verse 11. These things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. Praise God. See? He is telling us these things because it's essential that we know them. Why? His joy remain in us. And our joy will be made full. Because what do we know about his joy? His joy is full. Listen. That joy is a full joy. Not lacking in anything. There is nothing like it. Nothing can dis be described to be compared to it. His joy is full. And it fills us up and it remains in us. No one can take it away. Praise be to God. That's the joy that Jesus gives us in us. What do we know? The joy he gives us is the fruit of the Spirit. The love he gives us is the fruit of the Spirit. If we really are in the spirit, we will love and we will be joyful as well. The fruits of the spirit. Take note of that fact. If you're grumpy all the time, miserable all the time, don't have no joy in you, examine yourself. You're not bearing fruits. You're definitely not bearing the fruit of joy. If that's your disposition, examine yourself carefully. Yeah? Take note of the fact this joy is essential because what do we know to abide in him to bear fruits for him we're gonna face what trials temptations that's okay we have a joy that is never gonna be diminished anyway our joy is made full praise god so we can survive anything hallelujah so let's continue verse 12 this is my commandment that ye love one another as I have loved you. Praise be to God. This is a tall order. It's very tall. Because this is Jesus' commandment. That we love one another. As he has loved us. Take note of the fact. If we love one another. We are demonstrating the love of Christ to us. We are in a sense demonstrating the love of Christ. We are in a sense demonstrating the love of the Father for Christ. Think about it. The Father love him. He love us like the Father love him. He is asking us now to love each other the way he loves us. Listen, it's a very tall order. It therefore mean no matter what 
one person to another we ought to forgive we ought to love and listen it's very tall because what do we know about human nature very fickle we're going to encounter a lot of things that are going to beset us but what are we called to do to love love it's essential you're called by christ what will be the fruit of the spirit that will be most evident in your life love love there is nothing in this world that can destroy love ever take note of the fact the one thread that unites us all unites the father the son and us love take note of the fact and it is a fruit of the spirit so it's not like we have to go seek after love 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 is abiding in us the holy spirit is teaching us how to love praise be to god it is essential that we understand the lessons why is jesus specifying here is because we cannot be in oneness if we do not love right and he's asking us to love the way he love us so how does jesus love us jesus love us so much he died for us jesus love us so much he blot out all our sins jesus love us so much he mediates for us every day what does this mean if we love someone we will forgive them if we love someone we will not remember what they did wrong to us after we are forgiven them we will forget what they did wrong to us if we remember the experience it will not be with bitterness it will be with love praise god we will not be constantly reminding the people of what they did wrong to us if you do that that means you have not yet forgiven right you have to keep forgiving until it doesn't this thing of it is not felt anymore it is essential and then rather than bringing it up every time for the person to feel this thing of having hurt us we choose deliberately choose to bury it not that we have buried it so that the problem would not be no we we immediately choose to give it over give it over to god why we bury it so we don't have it no more he has taken it over and what do you think he's gonna do with it cast it away he don't want it either he has already blotted out it anyway think about it we're in oneness you see oneness great and beautiful love that we are called to love it is amazing it is possible let's continue verse 13 greater love at no man than this that a man laid down his life for his friends praise be to god think about it a person laying down the life for someone they love you can see that right it's possible but imagine this person is a friend you're not related to the person hmm? but you lay down your life for your friend the love of jesus it's the greatest love of all he laid down his life for us, all of us. Some people hate him still. They call him all kind of name. They blaspheme him. They look down on him. But you know what? He has laid down his life for them. He has laid down his life for every one of us. What do we do with the love of Jesus? We accept him. We are friends, so we are no longer in the servant role. Where we were servants before, we have been adapted into the family. We are called children. Praise be to God. It is important we understand this, yeah? It's essential that we understand. The love of Jesus is not a joking matter. And Jesus is telling us, there are no greater love that we will ever find than his love because he lays down his life suffered and died listen the suffering he went through is not just a simple matter you know? 
he suffered and died think about it he laid down his life for us you know? he gave it everything he has got everything was poured out let's remember that let's remember that and let us understand our God hmm? it is essential that we do so so let's continue verse 14 ye are my friends if ye do whatsoever I command you praise God so Jesus is saying you are going to be my friend if you do what I tell you to do you can't walk unless you agree you can't be saying it's okay to hate someone who did you wrong and yet you've called by Jesus it doesn't work that way Jesus says you have to love therefore love is essential whether people hate us or not we have to love them whether people did like us or not we have to love them as it is saying here in verse 14 we have to love them follow his commandments of loving each other like he love us is essential we have to love we must if we don't love we are not a friend of jesus if we don't love we cannot abide in jesus if we don't love we cannot bear fruits in jesus let's be mindful of that fact yeah so let's continue verse 15 henceforth i call you not servants for the servant know it not what is lord do it but i have called you friends for all things that i have heard of my father i have made known unto you praise be to god so what is jesus saying here you are my friends not my servants you are my friends right it is essential you are not my servants because you cannot know what your lord is doing if you're a servant because the lord commands the servant doesn't explain to the servant what he wants him to do why he wants him to do how he wants him to do just give the servant a direct order and the servant do jesus is telling us it's not so with us he has shared everything the father has shared with him with us right everything the father told him he told us Praise God. It's essential to note. If the father would have told him when the exact return would be, he would have even told us that too. That's why the father don't tell him. Because the father knows he is going to love total. He loves total. So the father hold back information that he knew the son should not know just yet. Praise God take note of that you know it's love the father would not even put him in a bad spot because the father know that if he tell him and he, you see he goes, he's gonna tell him and tell him not to tell us that's gonna be very difficult because his desire will be to tell us everything he would not want him to hold back anything so he the father held it back for himself so he's not so his son will not be in a pickle wanting to tell us yet can't tell us because what do we know about the son? He will honor the father. Praise be to God. So it is important for us to know. He loves us. We are not servants. We are little children. We are friends. Here he is describing us as friends. Right? Later on, we are told that we are what? Little children. Because what? The adoption had come. Here at this moment, they were not yet adopted in right they had not gone through the holy spirit's baptism as yet right because for them they had still not gotten the fullness of the gospel yet now they are getting the fullness of the gospel that's why the fullness of the gospel is preached to us we haven't received the fullness of the gospel received the fullness of christ haven't received his fullness we are baptized by the holy spirit we're not like them who had to wait so long we are baptized by the holy spirit as soon as we accept christ we are baptized by the holy spirit praise god 
the Holy Spirit is there for us to help us take note of the fact the Holy Spirit may not be mentioned here but we have to remember one thing for anything to happen between us and Christ the Holy Spirit has to be involved right essential that we know this so don't think that oh because he's only talking about the father what of the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit is vital for everything the Holy Spirit is vital so when he's talking about himself and the father automatically the Holy Spirit is involved in the process because the Holy Spirit is one that enables us to be bound to Jesus and the father in the first place think about it so he tells us everything he heard from the father praise be to God therefore we know what the father requires we know what he likes we know what he doesn't delight in we know what we ought to do we know how to please him we know how to glorify him praise be to God so let's continue verse 16 he have not chosen me but I have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain that whatsoever ye shall ask of the father in my name he may give it to you praise be to God so what is Jesus saying here we have not chosen him take note of the fact he was speaking to the disciples here he chose them remember he called them they didn't pick him he called them the same way he calls us today praise be to God right ordained mean to appoint so he has appointed all of us hmm? that we should go and bring forth fruits because that is what is required of us that we be fruitful and multiply it's not just having babies it's to be fruitful in everything we do to multiply in everything we are given praise be to God praise be to God and our fruit will remain praise God what do we know anything we ask of the father in Jesus name the father will give it to us why the father loves the son very much and because we're in the son the father loves us too take note of the fact but we have to ask in Jesus name why because it's a requirement of the father he will honor us through his son because he demonstrates his love for us that he will give his son for us so everything concerning us will give honor unto his son that's what happened you know the son honors the father the father honors the son we honor the son and the father they honor us it works that way cannot be bearing fruit outside of the son and the father praise be to god praise be to god we are only able to bear fruit because we are going to be given everything we desire by the father praise be to god praise be to our god he is worthy to be praised hmm? so let us not be weary in well doing eh? let us hold fast to our god praise be to god so let's continue verse 17 these things i command you that ye love one another praise god so you see our prayers will be answered our fruits will remain our joy will be made full we ought to love one another we are friends not servants what is all this because keep the commandment so what is jesus saying it is his choice it is his choice and he's saying love one another it is essential it is essential you know it's when we understand that love is not a maybe one -a, it's a requirement it's a must we have to love one another no negotiations praise be to god 
and is and Jesus is the one who has commanded us to love. If we love him, we love one another. We know we love the Father because that is one of the greatest commandments that we love the Father with everything we have and we love the neighbor as ourselves. It is essential that we love each other. Jesus is there telling us, impressing upon us the importance of loving the way he loved. Total. Don't pretend to love. Actually love. Praise God. So let's continue verse 18. If the world ate you, he know that it hated me before it hated you. Praise God. So what is he touching base on now? It is essential that we abide in love abiding in him because the world will hate us because the world hates him so let's not be surprised when the world hate us it's okay if the world love us we have to be in trouble if the world love us we have to be troubled if the world love us we have to be very troubled and seek after God's face because if the world love us something is amiss Something is very much amiss. Because the world hates Jesus. Therefore the world will hate us. And it's okay. What are we called to do? To love. Praise be to God. So let us love even when they hate us. Let us love. And we know they're hating us. Because they hated Jesus too. Right? We're called by his name. They will hate us too. Therefore, stop going seeking after the world. Love. A lot of people, they call themselves believers. And yet they're gapping, yearning, hankering after the world's love. Stop it. You're called by Jesus. If the world don't like you, rejoice. At least you're following after Jesus. Praise be to God. Let's continue verse 19. If he were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, I have chosen you out of the world. Therefore, the world hated you. Praise be to God. So what is Jesus saying? I have chosen you out of the world. You're not of the world. Though we're in the world, we're not of the world. Jesus has chosen us out of the world. If we were of the world, the world would love us. Because what? The world of his own. Sinfulness rules the world. Jesus calls us unto righteousness. Because righteousness is enmity against sin, no love will be lost there. You see? Sin can never love righteousness. And righteousness can never love sin. It's just the facts. Yeah? Let's be mindful of that. So the world will not like us because we are taken out of the world. That's why the world will hate us. Because we are set apart now. We are different. We are not following the program that has been set. We have become exalted and elevated. We are from another kingdom. That's what makes it very interesting for us to understand. The world will hate us. But it's alright. Fret not. Fear not either. It is well with our soul. Because what do we know? Jesus loves us. The Father loves us. And we ought to love one another. Praise God. So let's continue verse 20. Remember the word that I said unto you. The servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. Praise be to God. So what is Jesus saying? We are not greater than him. Perish the thought. We're not greater than him. So if the world hated him, the world will hate us too. The same way the world treat him, they'll treat us too. They persecute him, they'll persecute us too. They hated him, they'll hate us too. If they accept his word, they'll accept our words too. Why? Because we are following after the master. He's our Lord. Praise be to God. So these believers were going around and parading for the world and saying, the world loves them and they're receiving the love of the world. Examine them carefully. 
We are not going to judge them, but we examine them carefully. And one thing can be made evident, they compromise. They compromise. They compromise by accepting the ways of the world along with the love of the world. And if you accept the ways of the world along with the love of the world, what did the Father say? What did John say about the Father? Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Why? Because all that is in the world is the loss of the flesh, the loss of the eye, the pride of life. And it's not of the Father, but of the world, because those are sinful things. Sin is not of the Father. Let's be reminded of that. And what is essential for us to remember? The world pass away and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. It is essential that we understand that. It is essential that we get that. The world will hate us. But it's all right. Because the Father loves us. Praise be to God. And we continue in his will. We, we will abide forever. Because everything concerning the Father is forever. His will is forever. His love is forever. You understand? He will preserve us forever. We're called by his name. That's why we are given eternal life, you know. Everlasting life is our portion because we are in Christ. Praise God. So let's continue. Verse 21. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake because they know not him that sent me. Praise God. So the world will do unto us things for Christ's sake. Right? For his name's sake. Right? Why? Because they don't know the Father who sent him. Yeah? They pretend to know the Father. They pretend to be living for the Father, but they don't. It happens in today's world. There are those who are pretending to be for God. They are pretending to be called by Jesus. They are pretending to be of the Father, but they are not. How do we know they are not? They don't bear no fruit. They blaspheme. They hate. They don't even abide. So we know they are not of Christ. They pretend to be, but they are not. Because they do not do the things that Christ commanded them to do. Take note of that. Right? Instead, they persecute the believers. They hate us. They hate us, you know? And it's what? Why, why do they do that? Because they hate Christ, whom we represent. Hmm? It's essential for us to know that. Because they do not know the Father. They cannot accept the Son. They will never accept us who are sent by His Son. Praise be to God. So let us not look friendship from the world. Let us not go hankering for the love of the world. They cannot love us. Let us be mindful of that fact. Praise God. Let's continue. Verse 22. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin. But now they have no cloak for their sin. Praise be to God. Listen. This is essential to note. What Jesus is saying. If he did not come and speak about the father unto them speak the words of the father unto them given them the words of the father then they would not have sinned but because he has come and he has spoken the words the father has given him to speak he has shared the word of the father unto all of us that's why they have sinned why because having known the father through christ having known of christ having known that he is the only begotten son of God that was sent to us to redeem us. Having known, they reject him. 
it's worse for the people who know than for the people who don't know. It's worse. Because now they don't have no excuse for the sin. They cannot say they don't know how to live a righteous life because they've never been demonstrated it. They cannot say that they've never seen it, the possibility of it. They cannot say that they've never been told how to go about doing it because what? Christ tell us everything. He did not just tell us, he demonstrated for us. Praise be to God. So, it is clear there is no more cloak for sin. No more excuses. You can't, you can't put on a cloak and pretend you, you know? You don't know. No. It is clear to see. If you delight in sin, it's because you delight in sin. It's not because you don't know of the goodness of God. It's because you delight in sin. And the love of God is not in you. Take note of the fact. So let's continue. Verse 23. He that hated me, hated my father also. Praise be to God. You hate Jesus, you hate his father also. Why? Because the father has sent his son unto us. If you did not receive his son, you do not receive the father also. That's why the wrath of God will abide on those who do not believe in the Son. It's not because they don't have information about the Son. It's not because they do not understand what the Son is saying. It's because they delight to do their own thing and their own sinful ways. They do not wish to abandon. And because of that, they reject Him. The Father will reject them and He will reign on them. Take note of the fact. You hate Jesus, you hate his father also. Yeah, some people talk about, oh, I don't know about Jesus, but I know about his father. You cannot deny the father and his son. They're in oneness. You accept the son, then you have accept the father too. You don't accept the son, you cannot accept the father too. It's just the way it is done. Hmm? It's serious. And if you don't love him, you hate him. There is no middle ground. Take note of the fact. So verse 24. If I had not done among them the works which none other man did, they had not had sin. But now have they both seen and hated both me and my father. Praise be to God. And what does that do? That exposes that these, though they were claiming to be called by God and following after God and seeking after God they were really not because they hate the good works performed by Jesus they hated him right they hated him even though the works testify of who he is they hated him and because they did not accept the works and they did not care for the works because see the works were done to demonstrate that he is sent from the Father. If he did not do them, they would have an excuse. They would have an excuse. They would have a cloak for the sin, but no, they don't have none. Because they have seen the works, yet they have hated the Father and the Son. Very, very, very vicious. If they did not see the works, they could make an excuse. Now there's no excuse. The hatred they have for the Son and the Father is evident. They do not follow after the will of God. They do not seek to live for Him either. They love sinfulness. They love filth. Take note of the fact. Right? We have to love Jesus. We have to accept His works. We have to be bold and stand up and proclaim Him, our King. Not being ashamed of him and hiding behind. No. Testify of his goodness, praise God. It's his end job. Because the world will hate him. We already know that. So we have to take note of the fact they will hate us too. The sin they commit is evident. Very evident. Let's continue verse 25. But this cometh to pass that the word might be fulfilled that is spoken in their law. They hated me without a cause. Praise be to God. So here is he quoting 
Psalm 35 verse 19. Right? Also, 69 verse 4. Also, 109, 3 to 5. Concerning this matter of hating him without a cause. Yeah? Take note of the fact. He didn't do anything to them. He did not hate them. Did not treat them harshly. Only spoke the truth. The truth sets you free. That's if you want to be freed. If you do not want to be freed, the truth becomes an offense unto you. But you cannot deny that the truth has been spoken unto you. Praise God. Is what Jesus was saying. They hate him without a just cause. They have no cause whatsoever to hate him at all. But they hate him just because. It's very bad. It's very bad. Right? So, it is essential that we consider. Do we really, really want to be lovers of the world and loved by the world? And be called by Christ. Disparity is there. The two cannot align. Take note of the fact. Because they hate Jesus without a cause. It's to fulfill the word. Jesus is even saying the words that is in their law. Because what? Specifically speaking concerning the Sanhedrin now. They hated him. Hated him a lot. The Sanhedrin hated him a lot. Because what? He was not letting them look good. They studied the law. Yet they were deceiving the people. Abusing the people. Jesus came teaching the words of God unto the people. So the people could be saved. You see? They did not care about the people. But Jesus did. What don't you know? They hate him without a cause. They had nothing to prove that he did anything to them. They hated him just because he spoke the truth. People will hate us because we speak the truth, you know. Especially when we're speaking about Jesus. But that's okay. That's alright. If people hate us because we are speaking about Jesus, that is to be expected. Because they hated Jesus anyway. So let's not be weary in well-doing, yeah? Let's continue. Verse 26. But when the Comforter is come... Whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceeded from the Father, he shall testify of me. Praise be to God. So you see, our Comforter, the Holy Spirit, our Helper, take note of the fact. Jesus is saying when he is come, because what? Jesus himself is saying, I will send unto you from the father right take note of the fact the holy spirit is the spirit of truth and where does the holy spirit proceed from the father because they're in oneness remember it's all about oneness right the holy spirit is in the father and the holy spirit always testify of jesus Every single time. The Holy Spirit cannot keep quiet about Jesus. All the time. The Holy Spirit will testify about Jesus. The Holy Spirit is our comforter. Is, is because he comforts us. He helps us. He teaches us. He helps us to understand the words of Jesus. The words of God in a whole. Right? The Holy Spirit also exposes us to the truth of the matter. Revealing unto us the truth. Because the lies of the world will not stand up against the truth. Praise be to God. So, Jesus is telling the disciples, When the Holy Spirit comes, the Holy Spirit will testify of me. Bearing witness. Right? Because the Holy Spirit always bear witness, you know. Every time. And so, we have... 
the Holy Spirit not being mentioned by Jesus. Because you see, a lot of people don't understand the role of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has always been active, doing the work of God. Because the Holy Spirit is God. Take note. A lot of people don't realize the Holy Spirit is God. You know? They think that the Holy Spirit is just a spirit. But remember, our God is a spirit. Our God is a spirit. Therefore, the Holy Spirit is God. <laughs> it is essential that we understand that. Eh? Jesus is saying he's going to send the Holy Spirit from the Father to us. Praise be to God. It is essential. He also said we should ask the Father for the Holy Spirit. Because the Father is able to give us the Holy Spirit. So we ask in Jesus' name for the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit will be given to us. Praise be to God. Because what? The Holy Spirit is continuously proceeding out of the Father unto us. And he will continuously proceed from the Father unto us forever. Yeah? Take note. Right? Right? The Holy Spirit is always before the Father. Right? So remember, the three share the throne. The Holy Spirit is right in the throne. The Holy Spirit has the seven spirits. See the seven spirits of God? They're all the Holy Spirit. They're all before the throne. But the Holy Spirit is also beside the Father. Proceeding. Proceeding, 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 continuously proceeding, continuously, right? Because what? The Holy Spirit is in the Son, in the Father, and in us at the same time. Take note of the fact, right? The Holy Spirit is in the Father, in the Son, in us all the time. The Holy Spirit is not limited by anything or anyone. The Holy Spirit is always given to us. Because the Holy Spirit delights to come to us as well. The Holy Spirit loves to be with us, you know. Take note of the fact. The Holy Spirit was, in fact, we were created for the Holy Spirit to indwell us. That was the purpose for us being created. Remember that. Let us make man in our own image after our own likeness. Remember that. Purposeful, powerful, impactful. Therefore, the Holy Spirit created the home within us for himself. That he will be with us in oneness with us. Oneness was always the idea. One, oneness was always the father's plan. Oneness will always be the father's plan for us. We were always going to be the children of God. Take note of the fact. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. So take note of the fact. Jesus is here drawing very clear reference to the work of the Holy Spirit within us. The Holy Spirit testifies of Jesus all the time. Every time. Take note of the fact. So let's continue. Verse 27 and last. And he also shall bear witness because he have been with me from the beginning. Praise be to God. You see... So here Jesus is pointing out, very importantly, the Holy Spirit is in the Father, the Holy Spirit is in Him. And what is Jesus saying? The Holy Spirit will bear witness. Right? The Holy Spirit will bear witness because He has been with Him from the beginning. From the beginning. What does He mean by the beginning? What beginning is He talking about? So you have to understand, the Holy Spirit is also our advocate. That's how he bears witness concerning Christ. He advocates for us as well. 
Yeah? So we bear witness of Christ. We testify of Christ. The Holy Spirit testifies of Christ. The Holy Spirit bears witness on our behalf too. So the Holy Spirit will also make petition for us, intercede for us on behalf of us too. Right? So the Holy Spirit is the same as Jesus. Right? Think about it. Jesus is begotten of the Father. The Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. They are in oneness. They will never end. They will never not be in oneness. We have one God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. That's why there's one throne. They sit on that throne. The Holy Spirit don't necessarily need a spot, you know. But the Holy Spirit has its place. Take note of that. It's not like you're going to be going in heaven and be seeing the Holy Spirit. Like, oh, there's the Holy Spirit. No. The Holy Spirit, you cannot even see him. He is like the wind. Yeah. You see the action. You know his presence because you, you, you will feel him. And he will demonstrate his works and you will see the manifestation of his works. But the Holy Spirit is very much alive and, a, and, and the Holy Spirit is a person. The Holy Spirit is not a thing. A lot of persons mistake the Holy Spirit and say it. As if the Holy Spirit is a thing but the Holy Spirit is a person. He. Take note of what Jesus said. Jesus did not ever say it. Jesus says it. He. Yeah. So we bear witness of Jesus and the Holy Spirit will bear witness with us. Right? Because what? The disciples had always been with Jesus since the beginning of his ministry. There are some that he called very quickly after his temptation. He came and he called them. Right? And they have been with him. The Holy Spirit has been with him the entire time too. Remember that. Even for the even for Jesus when he was formed in the womb. The Holy Spirit was involved in the process, you know. The Holy Spirit overshadowed Mary for Jesus to be entering into her womb. Remember. It's the same Jesus. It's the same Son of God that has always been. Why do you think the demons are crying out so much? Because they know him. They know him so well. Right? So let us remember our God is one. We bear witness of him. The Holy Spirit bear witness of him. We testify of him. The Holy Spirit testify of him. Right? We are the children of God because we have the love of our father we love him too we love each other we have the holy spirit dwelling within us praise be to god so as we go through it today let us consider carefully are we bearing fruits are we abiding in christ do we really love like jesus does he tells us his commandment that we should love one another. Are we loving? Because you see. You cannot say you are called by Christ. You are abiding in him. You are of Christ. Yet you hate. What do we know? The world hates. The world hates us. Therefore hating one another is of the world. Loving one another is of our God. Therefore, we love. We can't be pretending to be on the team of God while we're doing the world's things. It doesn't work that way. The Father will spew you out. You'll be taken out. You'll wither away and you'll be cast into the fire. Doesn't work that way. So let us let us yield to the Holy Spirit and experience the love of our God. And share it with each other too. 
It is essential that we share with one another the love of our God. It is essential, right? We have to understand the world will do to us what the world has done to Christ. When we represent him, when we're living for his name, the world will do to us what they've done to Christ. It's okay. He overcomes, so we will overcome as well. Right? We also have the Holy Spirit, which is our comforter, to help us, to, to guide us, to testify of Jesus, to bear witness as well, and to teach us all things, to teach us the truth. So let us yield to the Holy Spirit. Right? Let us remember we are grafted into the vine. Therefore, we are in oneness. Let us remember that. Therefore, we have to live circumspectly. We can't be choosing sin and say we live in for Christ. Team Christ does not endorse sin. So let us cheer for Christ and cheer for righteousness. While we shun and rebuke sin. Praise be to God. Glory be to his name. Let's pray. Most righteous and eternal Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. Under the authority of the Holy Spirit. Father, we love you. We thank you. We worship you. We glorify your name. We exalt you on high. We praise you. We are grateful to you. We worship you. Father, we surrender our sins to you we know that we're sinful because we're living in a sinful world and we are of a sinful nature we are bombarded with a sinful body but father we hate sin we shun it too we don't want no part in it so we ask of you father search us through if you find any sin cast it out from us we confess them and we repent of them too and teach us how to hold fast to your truth and to hold fast to righteousness for your name's sake praise God so we delight in righteousness father so we ask that you fill us up with righteousness fill us up with your truth fill us up with your love fill us up with your joy your peace fill us up with your long suffering your faith fill us up with your goodness your meekness your gentleness fill us up with self-control fill us up with grace fill us up with forgiveness fill us up with your Holy Spirit Holy Spirit we welcome you Holy Spirit Holy Spirit find habitation and dwell you know you are always welcome praise god praise god praise god holy spirit do your work holy spirit reveal unto us the truth holy spirit speak to our hearts let us know we are christ praise god praise god you are the evidence that we are children of god we are grateful we are grateful and so we yield to you holy spirit we surrender to your will Father, we're so obedient to your will because we know it's not of ourself that we're so obedient. It's because we have the Holy Spirit li living within us. Praise God. So we yield to the Holy Spirit and we are obedient to your will. We are so grateful. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, according to your will, let every plan that you have called on our life, that you have established in our life, that you have thought towards us, let them be established in the name of Jesus. Let us live according to your plan and according to your thoughts and according to your way because we delight in Jesus. We live for him. Father, prune us away and let us bring forth fruits in abundance for the kingdom. Hide the words in our hearts so that we will be cleansed by the word. Also, hide the words in our heart so that we will heal to you. Hold fast to your word so that we can continue to abide in Christ. So that we will continue to hold fast to the truth of Christ. So that we will continue to bear forth fruits for him. So that we will continue to glorify you, Father. Hallelujah. Father, help us to be comforted when the world hates us. It's okay. We are for Christ. We are not of the world. Though we are living in the world. We are of you. Praise God. Praise God. Teach us to remember. Though we're hated, we're loved by you. Praise God. Praise God. Your love for us is all powerful. Jesus, you love us total. Praise God. We are in you and we are grateful. 
Holy Spirit, thank you for continuously revealing unto us the truth. Holy Spirit, plant the words in our heart, in our soul, in our mind, in our spirit. Plant the words in us so that they'll bring forth fruit in abundance all the time, yielding fruits for the kingdom all the time. Praise God. Father, help us to know that you will never leave us nor forsake us. Help us to know that we will never be forgotten. Help us to love each other. Teach us how to forgive. Because sometimes we hold on to too much things. Teach us how to forgive and to let go of grievances. They're not even half you in the first place. Teach us how to shun evil so that we hold fast to your truth. Praise God. Praise God. Father, as we go forth into today, we give back today to you, Father. We give the day to you to do with the day what you will. Do what your soul desire to do according to your good pleasure. Praise God. Father, we present ourselves before you, the saints. Crying out to you, Father, against the injustice of this world. Crying out to you, Father, to save the souls that have, been, that have not yet come. Crying out to you, Father, to save those who are crying out to you father that you release the army to fight to minister to also support us father that you will continuously lead us into the way of your work we are grateful father that you influence our mind and our heart that you are going to be our delight praise god father we present the sinners they have not yet come we ask that you give them opportunities to be saved. Salvation is available. That they will yield unto you, Father. Father, we present the wicked. You see them. They are not lost. You are watching them very carefully. You see everything that they are so busy doing in, in darkness, hiding and taking counsel and, and doing wickedness. You see them. You see them. And you will reward them if they don't repent. So give them opportunities to come to you, Father, because we know that unless they repent, you will deal with them. You will, you will deal with them. Praise God. Father, we yield to you because we know our enemy. Busy, busy doing all kind of wickedness. We know our enemy. But we leave the enemy in your hands, Father. The principalities, the powers. The rulers of darkness of this world, the spiritual wickedness in high places, we leave them in your hands, Father. You see them. They are not lost. They cannot be hidden neither. We ask that you will push them back. Restrain them, Holy Spirit, because you know the filth that they are up to. You know what, what evil schemes they have devised. We ask that you clear them from our dwelling. We ask that you clear them from the places that we go to congregate to worship as well. We ask that you clear them from every aspect of our life. Father, as we face temptations and trials, help us to be emboldened and strengthened to know that we are called by you. We are your children. Praise be to God. Father, in our going out, in our coming in, be with us continually, always. We delight in you. So protect us in our going out. Protect us in our coming in. Holy Spirit, breathe upon the path. Establish your standards around us. Raise up peace. And let peace prevail in every place that we go. Every people we meet. Everyone that we interact with. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. Let your word be done. Let your word be established. Jesus, let it be done as you desire it to. We yield to you. Father, guide us in the name of Jesus according to your desires. We are grateful. Father, we ask you to bless us with your good and perfect gifts in the name of Jesus. Everything that you have called our name on, let it so be done to us accordingly in the name of Jesus. We yield to you. We ask that you continuously strengthen us and embolden us for your ministry. That we will continue to grow in the family. That we will continue to yield fruits for the family. Praise God. Father, be with us always. We love you. We delight in you. Thank you in the name of Jesus. Because we believe and we abide. Praise God.
Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. So as we go forth triumphantly and mightily, because we are called by your name, Father. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. In the name of Jesus, praise God. We wrap our prayers in the blood of Jesus, our King, our God. We love you. Praise God. We anoint our prayers with our Holy Spirit's anointing. Father, we love our Holy Spirit. We're grateful. We're so grateful. We send them up to you. Father, sweet Savior, may they be. May they be acceptable in your sight. Our Father, our God, our King, we love you. We hail you. We glorify your name. Praise God. Because we're praying in Jesus' name. Believing and knowing. Accepting, receiving. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's go forward. Children of the King. Remember, we are loved. And we need to love each other too. Let's continue to be fruitful. All the best for today. Peace be unto you as Jesus gives. So let's receive. All the best for today. I love you.